What we have here is a 2 by 12 raftered roof system. Uh, very nice, uh, very popular roof system, and by its very nature, as you can see, creates a nice cathedral ceiling area. Before we get into that anymore, we want to back up and look at the floor system in front of us. Uh, what we're looking at here is actually our standard second level floor system. The joists that we see are six by eight uh, floor joists. Typically, they, they would be notched into what normally would be the 14th log course, inch and three quarters deep. Details pertaining to that would be on your blueprints. Also, you'll notice that what would typically be the 15th log course has a notch cut out of it to be able to slide that floor into. What that does for us, it prevents us from having to have any molding or baseboards, that type of thing, uh, in that area. Makes a nice, clean, finished appearance. The flooring itself, we have one by eight tongue and groove boards. They're attached to the floor joist. Directly on top of those boards, we have three quarter inch OSB. Uh, it's a tongue and groove subfloor material. Uh, obviously, that system is going to need some type of a finished floor applied to the top of it, either carpet, uh, even linoleum, uh, uh, or even a hardwood floor. Makes a very nice floor system, goes down easily, uh, very user friendly. We do recommend or highly recommend I should say that even this floor not be installed until your home is under roof. The reason for that we don't want this material getting wet. Uh, what can happen even though it is a, a subfloor material when the water gets down through that or around it and gets into the tongue and groove boards we've opened ourselves up for a potential mold situation that we want to avoid at all costs. So it's always best not to put the flooring down until the roof is actually weather tight, then you can go back in and apply the, uh, the actual flooring. The roof system itself, we have two by 12 rafters, as we mentioned earlier. Pretty straightforward assembly. The uh, good, good side of this particular roof is we can actually construct the whole structure here, get our uh, sheathing on the roof, our felt, and even our shingles can be applied, and then we can come back in and put our tongue and groove into place uh, without any concern of it getting wet and that type of thing. The assembly itself would start by putting the rafters on. Uh, all roof systems are always trying to spread apart at the bottom. They want to spread apart at the bottom and come down at the ridge. A couple of things can be done to prevent that from happening. Most commonly, we would put what we call collar ties uh, in the roof system. What this member, this large member here, it's a six by eight, this is a structural collar tie. And you can see that it's actually bolted to the rafters. Uh, it's actually wedged between two rafters and through bolted through that whole assembly. And what that does, is it connects the two rafters together on the horizontal plane, prevents them from spreading apart. If they can't spread apart, the roof can't spread, and we've got a st stable structure at that point. Another item that uh, Struck, or makes the structure of a roof system acceptable would be our ridge board. Now in this case, you can see we just have a single two by 12 ridge board. There are cases, many cases, where that might be a double two by 12 or even a glue lamb beam. Again, when we go to a structural type ridge board, what we're doing is we're putting a heavy ridge on that roof assembly. If that ridge cannot deflect, it can't come down, the rafters can't spread, and we've got a very strong assembly. A combination of the two is the most common uh, situation that you're gonna find on one of our log homes. It is very important, however, to pay very close attention to your blueprints. We may find a situation where we have a single two by 12 ridge like you see here that goes part way across the home and it may turn into a double two by 12 or even a glue lamb beam at some point in that, uh, that roof system. Very important to pay attention to your plans very closely to see where that transition point takes place. Typically it would be over a, maybe a partition wall, sometimes there just may be a post there where it changes from one ridge to another type of ridge. Very important to pay attention to that on your prints. The rafters would be installed, and as they are being installed, you'd want to go ahead and put the collar ties into place. Typically, these collar ties are four foot on center, but there are some uh, exceptions to that. So again, just pay close attention to your individual blueprints. The rafters put up, collar ties installed as you go. 
after the whole uh, structure of the roof is assembled, you'd want to go ahead and put your sheathing on top of the rafters. And then at that point, at least get the felt on the roof. You've got a fairly weather-tight structure. You can go inside and start working in, inside the home. The next step would be to go ahead and install, install your insulation. <clears throat> now, in this roof system, we also use 12-inch uh, fiberglass insulation that gives us a R38 R value, okay? 12 inches of insulation being compressed on its own into an 11 and a quarter inch rafter space is not a good thing. We need to ventilate these roof systems. Now there's different styles of this product that I'm showing you here. This is one of them. It's called prop event, styro vent, free vent, different names for it. But what it does, it's designed to actually go up in between your rafters and it actually creates an air space so the air can flow from your soffit straight up to your ridge vent unobstructed and it doesn't, uh, it prevents your, your insulation from being compressed right up against the bottom side of your sheathing. So be careful to install this. Uh, very important that it be, uh, be put into the roof. It's also best when this is being installed to allow the upper sheets they usually come in four foot sections to allow the upper sheets to slightly overlap the sheets below it. That way if there's any type of moisture in your roof at all, uh, it has a chance to run down and out through the soffit rather than uh, simply uh, getting down into your insulation, which we do not want to see happen. After that's installed, we'd go ahead and put our fiberglass into place. We use a fiberglass bat insulation. There's no paper facing on it. There's also some spring tension type wires that go in between the rafters to hold that fiberglass up into position. And then we go ahead and put our vapor barrier on and finish up by putting our tongue and groove into place. The vapor barrier on this roof system, it's a four mil plastic part of your package. Very important to be installed with no gaps, no tears. Anywhere that you have an overlap in that material, uh, you want to get a good overlap on it. Some people actually duct tape those joints uh, to, to ensure that you don't have any voids there. The concern with this, vapor barrier wise, we want to ensure that we don't have a condensation problem in the roof. Condensation is formed anytime that you have hot, humid air going up, hitting the colder, drier air, maybe typically in the, in the winter time creating a dew point. That dew point in the winter, if it's cold out, is gonna be in the form of frost. It can build up within the roof system and not really show itself until you start to warm up or warm day comes along, and then you might get a drip inside of your, your ceiling or something of that nature. Not a good thing. It's gonna wet your insulation. You don't want that to happen. It decreases the R value and so forth. So I'm, I just wanna emphasize that it's very important that this vapor barrier be installed with all diligence is very important to, to be put into place. The tongue and groove boards that you see here, our ceiling finish, uh, they would be installed by blind nailing in through the tongue into the bottom side of the rafters uh, with the vapor barrier in between the bottom of the rafter and the top of the boards. These members that you see here, these are purely decorative. They're decorative rafters, also six by eights in this case. There are nailers, two by six nailers, that are placed between the two rafters where the collar tie has been installed. And what they do is they allow us to lag these decorative rafter members up through the rafter and into those nailers to hold them into position. Gives a very nice appearance uh, of a true rafter system, but in actuality it is decorative with the exception of the collar tie itself. There are some options to what we see here. One of the options would be round members. They are very popular. A little bit of different details that we have to deal with when we're looking at these. The collar ties themselves, if we were gonna utilize a round collar tie, would have to be squared off on the end like you see here so it could be installed by wedging it between the two rafters and through bolting bolting it like we mentioned uh, with the six by eight collar tie. Now this particular one is actually a floor joist. You can see how the end of it's been squared off. If this was indeed a collar tie, this squared off portion obviously would have to be back onto an angle 
uh, so we could wedge it in between the, the two rafters. The decorative rafters that would go along with this are somewhat of a challenge. Uh, now we're talking about connecting round to round. And probably the most uh, user-friendly way to do that, this is cut at the job site, is simply to cut the proper angle on the end of the decorative rafter and at that point bevel the edges of that decorative rafter in to meet the uh, collar tie. As you can see here, it makes a nice appearance. It's not that hard to do. Okay, if we can spin this around a little bit. There's a couple of unique things here related to the gable end overhang. Typically, on this roof system, we would have a log gable. To install that log gable proper, properly, there are details on the blueprints that will ensure that that gable comes out in the center of the, the wall below where it needs to be. We work off of a center line location, so we get half of each log course on each side of that center line. Very, very important. We don't want to end up with a gable that's offset like this. We want a nice symmetrical gable that's built to the dimensions that it was designed to be built to. Once the gable's in place, we would have our uh, one inch tongue and groove soffit boards that go directly on a foam gasket that goes on the top surface of the gable. You can see here that there's a rafter directly on the inside face of that gable end. That rafter would be installed. We have outlookers that come out from the first regular rafter back in the roof system. They're attached to it. They come out through the rafter that's on the gable end, through a cantilever effect over the gable, and they come out here to connect to our fascia board. Pretty simple assembly. The uh, notches that you see here are simply put in there to allow free air movement throughout the whole roof system. All roof systems need to be ventilated, and this, this is just a little bit of assist to keep the air moving uh, freely through the roof system. We don't want to create any hot spots, uh, any areas that might, might be a potential condensation area. The two-by members that you see here, uh, this is blocking in between the rafters. Uh, the reason for that member is to actually give you a positive connection uh, place for the vapor barrier. It should be caulked on the inside surface, even on the outside is a good idea. We don't want any ventilating air to come up through our soffit, which would be a strip vent. We don't want it to come up through the strip vent and be allowed to work its way underneath that vapor barrier. So this would be, give you a nice positive seal there to ensure that your air goes up through the prop vent and on up to the ridge vent at the peak of the roof. A very important detail on the installation of these collar ties is to address any checks that may be present in the six by eight member itself. We don't want to allow any check in the face of the collar tie to allow uh, humid air from inside the home to migrate out into the insulated area. That could cause condensation also. We can address these checks the same way we did on our logs and so forth, simply drilling a hole into the check and then caulking that hole up to give a dam there so the, the, the air cannot migrate past that point. Once the collar tie is installed, We've got a good example here of how it would be wedged in between two rafters. All of this area should also be caulked. We want to prevent any migration of air uh, down the face or the top or the bottom of the collar tie into the non-heated area. Okay, so pay close attention to that. It's a small detail, but it's very, very important. At this point, I think we've pretty much covered this particular roof system. We do want to move on to another display that's going to uh, assist you to understand how to get the patterns cut for these particular rafters. 